my name is Lyle Sopel. I'm a jade and gemstone artist, and I'm here in Los Angeles, California, and I'm taking a course. I'm taking a course uh, with uh, Proctor Gallagher Institute, and I do this every once in a while to, uh, to uh, uplift my mindset. Like, I like to get out of the studio and um, just see, have a different perspective. So it's really wonderful to come to these courses and, um, you know, give myself a boost and lift myself out of the regular mindset that, uh, you know, just trying to be an artist puts you in. So these kinds of things are very helpful for me. So what I wanted to talk about today was this idea of um, being conditioned by our social situation as artists. And uh, I have a little story that I want to share with you because when I was uh, uh, just going over some emails a few days ago, I noticed that uh, there was an, uh, an invitation to attend a course on how to apply for a Canada Council grant. Now, I don't know in about a lot of you, but in Canada, the Canadian government offers grants for artists to produce particular projects. And so uh, if you have a experience or have a large project that you would like to produce, then you can just apply to Canada Council and they, through competition, will fund you the money if they find that you're worthy or that it's a, use, a project that can be something social. Anyway. There is, there is a process that you can get a handout from the government to produce your art. Now, when I read this article, that it was actually des designed to encourage young people or young artists to go to a course so that they could learn how to apply for grants or some other kind of handout from another source. So this just turned my head around when I read it, and I couldn't believe that we were actually teaching artists to not believe in themselves but to go somewhere else and and try to get money for their projects so um, this kind of thing happens in so many different ways and I'm sure that a lot of you have this idea from your parents like your parents would say you know why do you want to have an artistic career you can't make any money at that why don't you become a lawyer or become a doctor or some other kind of of career and I believe that being an artist is as legitimate a career as any of those other kind of professions and even so it's more so because of what we bring to society so there's all kinds of different things like um, when I was in art school I uh, my first day in art school as a matter of fact the uh, instructors gathered all the, the new students together and said well why don't you get together and we're going to talk about the proceeding year of, of art school and uh, the first thing the instructor said that only one percent of you in this class right now is ever going to exceed past this class and become a professional artist. So if you don't think of yourself as that one percent then you should get out of the class and do something else. So. For me, that was incredible. Like here it was again, I was being told that even though I wanted to be a successful artist and I was taking this course, the instructors were telling me that you're not gonna make it, man. You're not gonna be able to do it. So I took it the other way and I said, this is something that I am going to do. I am gonna achieve this and I'm gonna go on beyond this kind of um, put down from the society around me and I want to achieve more. So, you know, if you're an artist that does not have a sustainable career where you're making steady money, then you really have to look at yourself and say, like, why is that? Why? You have to have a different perspective on, on who you are and, and what you produce. So I, I want to give you kind of another little example of about, about myself. But when I started working as an artist, I... Um, went into the jade business and I started creating things that were small and uh, easy to make and well priced so it was simple you know something that I could sell quickly and I found people that wanted to buy these pieces and I'd made kind of a nice a nice little living but you know I wasn't very successful and I wasn't making tons of money I was just kinda getting by and I was doing something that I 
kind of liked, but I didn't really like it. And I wasn't feeling like I was very, very successful in my art career or I wasn't doing challenging myself to any kind of degree. So one day, one of my clients came into uh, my studio and he said, hey, these are really kind of nice little things that you're doing here, but can you make it bigger? Can you make something a little bit larger? And I said, well, yeah, I can do that. I can make larger things. And uh, I said, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. And he looked at me and said, well, that's okay. Do it. If, if I like it, I'll buy it. So one thing I didn't know and was that my perspective on a lot of money and this fellow's perspective on a lot of money were two different things. So right there, I had limited myself. My perspective was you know, how I thought of myself. I was just this limited guy that could only do this kind of thing. But the fact was, this guy had a perspective on me from the outside looking in and he said, well, this guy can do a lot more than what he's putting out. And he gave me that opportunity. So I did more and that changed my whole kind of paradigm of myself. And I went on to being more successful with my art and I was more challenged and I did things that were, you know, much more interesting as an artist. And uh, by doing that, I made more money and I got more, more fame. So, you know, if, um, so my point is really that if you see yourself uh, in a position like that, then you really have to think of what you're capable of. Like, what, what do you really think you're capable of as an artist? Can, can you do more than what you're at, where you're at right now? Can you achieve uh, a higher form of excellence? Can you make uh, things that are beyond what you are doing right now? Then if you think you can, then you should do that. You should make that a vision. You set your mind that that's the kind of thing you want to do. Make it your goal. Write your goal down and go there and make it happen. That's the way it goes. If you don't step forward, you're not going to go beyond what your limited perspective is and you're not going to go beyond how society looks at you in this limited way that you're an artist and you can't make it. So you got to step out of yourself and see yourself in a greater way. That's how you get there. So if you're going to go to a, a place where there's you know, business and galleries and you're going to present yourself in a way that um, uh, requires some business background, some, some things that um, you may not be totally aware of, then you need to kind of uh, armor yourself in a way. You have to prepare yourself for some kind of successful meeting with people that um, you want money from or that will help you in your career. So one of the things that I, I really like to, to make myself aware of is that as an artist, I'm a giver. Now, if somebody really, really, really loves my work and I can see it, I'm, I'm going to give it to them. I feel like, you know, if you love it that much, I'll give it to you. And money doesn't really matter in that sense. So I have to step back from what that attitude is and say, yeah, you, you love it, but I also need to make a living. So you have to have to be aware of this and you have to arm yourself in a way that, okay, yes, he loves it, they love it, I need this much money for it, write that down, or I need, I need to have something from this, this situation. So you write it down. And then, of course, when you go into business meetings, you got to meet these people that you're going to talk to on their level. Because really, you know, they're all equal. We're all equal. There's no difference between us all. We're all people. We all want the same thing. So what you can do is you dress yourself in, in business attire. You see yourself as they are, and you present yourself that way. And um, when you're on an equal level, they'll treat you that way. So that's one of the, there's two things. And then the other thing is, well, printed matter. Like you should always have a brochure of your art or something like that, that makes you uh, look a lot more uh, professional in a way that, um, um, you know, when you see something in writing or in print, then you have a lot bigger impression of uh, who 
that person is or whatever. So you should always have that as a, as a support, as an artist. You need to have printed matter that can uh, uh, set a precedent and concretize this idea of, of who you are as an artist. So I want to just show you some of the things that, that we do, or at least one of the things that we do today as a, a marketing package that kind of give you some ideas and some maybe perspective on what's a good idea. So let me just turn this around and show you. See, this is a, um, we call it a magazine. Now, um, it's, it's a number of pages, over 10 pages. And um, here it is with some high quality photographs on the, on the inside panel and a little description about me and my notable collectors. And um, some photographs of some of my uh, bigger pieces that I've done and a variety of other things here. So this all concretizes the idea of who I am and who I want the public to see me as. So I can say it all I want, but unless you have something that's defined in print, then it's pretty difficult to back it up. So this way, I can back it up and say, yeah, this is who I am, this is what I've done, this is my history, and um, people can look at it and contemplate it and have it for the future. So um, I'm right in the middle of my course right now, and I'm dying to get back in there and uh, challenge my mind and I hope um, I was able to inspire you a little bit more and um, I look forward to speaking to you again real soon. So remember, never give up and be inspired. Bye for now.